The Inca citadel of Machu Picchu was built in the 15th century at this spectacular location at 2430 meters above sea level. Its former usage remains a mystery to today's archaeologists, but it is speculated to have been a political, religious and administrative center or a royal residence. It used to have around 500 inhabitants and from the exceptionally high quality of the stonework we can tell that they were from the upper class such as priests, politicians and royal family. It is uncertain when the site was abandoned since it was never discovered by the Spaniards. Even though locals always knew about its existence it only came to international fame after it was discovered by the American historian Hiram Bingham in 1911 and subsequently freed from the vegetation. So it's 5.30, we've been in the line for the bus to Machu Picchu for around half an hour. We were supposed to meet with our tour guide. So we're at the entrance of Machu Picchu. Uh, there's a bit of a line, but it goes forward pretty quickly. And I'm actually really glad that we took that uh, hike yesterday because it really gave us that feeling of adventure and discovering you know, ancient cultures. While today, this experience is more like if you're at the entrance of Disneyland. We started our visit with a guided tour where we learned more about the different sites. This carefully carved natural rock cave is known as the Royal Tomb. Just above it is the Temple of the Sun, which is the only round building in all of Machu Picchu. The sacred plaza is surrounded by buildings with incredible stonework. This stone right here has 32 different angles. This is the temple of the three windows and we've seen it already from further up. And you could clearly see there is a big break in the wall where the earth under one half of the temple went lower than it used to be. The sundial was not only used to tell the time of day, but also allowed the Inca astronomers to predict the solstices, the shortest and longest days of the year. Down there is the market, and in the market traders came and they were selling things that they couldn't make up here. Uh, coca leaves for example only grow in the jungle, or they brought fish and they traded it for the local Foreign. products. And the square was also used for festivals such as the Inti Ramen. So this is the sacred rock and it sort of reminds of the mountains behind it. So people used to and still do bring offerings of coca leaves and they leave them in front of the rock uh, in order to safely be able to climb, climb the mountains. The Actually we observed this giving of coca leaves uh, in the boat when we were on uh, Lake Titicaca. The driver he took like the nicest three coca leaves he could find and he threw them out of the window and it was for exactly the same reason to a uh, sort of grand safe passage across the lake. So these here are the water mirrors and 
It is not entirely clear what they were used for. Some people believe it was used to look at the stars, but that doesn't make that much sense because you can see the stars much better if you just look up. And also, it seems that uh, because there is no drainage in this room, probably there was a roof. Another theory is that it was used to sort of measure the movement of the mother rock. So you could see if it shifts over time, for example, if it tilts to one side. Now we're standing in front of the um, condor rock. Here is the neck and the head of the condor. It has wings, like this, these two stones are like wings. And on the top of the wings, they build some kind of walls for sending people to the upper world. They would do some offerings and some rituals here for the people who die before they bury them. So the condor would basically take the souls and bring them up to the Milky Way or to the heavens. That's freaky. Hand for size comparison. So our guided tour ended. It's now around 9 a.m. It's already getting a lot more crowded. Like when we went through there, we were almost the only ones. And now it's pretty crowded. But I, I heard it's going to get way more crowded later. Round 10. Um, we're at the spot. Blah where all the pictures are taken. Um, but it's sort of shitty weather and rainy right now, so we don't feel like taking pictures that much. We're having a sort of our second breakfast. Um, hopefully it will get better, and then we'll take some pictures later. And for now, we'll walk around a bit, maybe go to that uh, Inca bridge. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's gonna be better in the afternoon, but it's gonna be quite long and cold until then. That looks really cool. Mm -hmm. We're going for the Inca bridge. So down there is the Inca bridge and while the bridge itself is maybe not that impressive what's impressive about it is how steep it goes down off the side of this trail and actually this is not the worst part because when you see over there you can sort of see the green path is where this Inca path used to continue and just look how steep it is there I would not want to walk there the path is good place and you know, it's so it's a and one wrong step, you're like forever forgetting of the world. The sun, we were waiting for this for four hours. One second is raining, the next second it's sunny. Actually, it's still kind of raining and it is sunny. And it just looks really amazing now with the clouds. experiencing the disappearance of Machu Picchu. We were here earlier in the morning and we were the only ones on the square. Now, not only is the weather much shittier, but, but you cannot even see the buildings from the group of people. Yeah. Most tourists only spend a few hours in Machu Picchu, which is a shame considering the effort and cost it took them to come here. To me, this is the main attraction in Peru, and there are so many amazing views, alleys, and corners to discover. If you're like us, planning to spend the whole day here though, beware that you can only enter the premises once and there is no catering or restrooms inside, so prepare accordingly.
see this llama one to one. Wish me luck. Pa, 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 pa. Man, this place is really like a labyrinth. The more we explore this place, the more we notice how many things we missed the first time. And there's just always like this one corner that we didn't see before. And just now we saw that there is actually a second pair of these two water surfaces. This time the surfaces are smaller, which makes it even less likely that they were used as some sort of mirror because they're definitely way too small right here. Oh, llama! Oi, oi, oi! Oi, 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 oi! We got here early in the morning at 10 past 6, I think we entered. So at 6 it opened, so we entered almost when it opened. Um, it's now almost 5 pm. The sun is setting. And we have the best view of the day. This is actually, this is the nicest time of the day. Well, the morning was also very nice. So the first two hours were amazing. There weren't too many people. Uh, the weather was nice. We saw some, the sunset. Then it started raining. And we spent probably five, six hours more or less just waiting for the rain to pass. And now, maybe an hour ago, the rain finally went away. And it's amazing again. And also, because of all the rain, most of the people actually just left. left. And we're again here with Machu Picchu and there's only a handful of people and it's really nice. mysterious clouds that were going over Machu Picchu earlier they're gone but also we will have to go now because they're throwing us out but man this was a nice time in the evening it was very calm just a couple of animals around and like maybe five other people sitting there and enjoying that's really nice <laughs> 